Hey, what's going on, man? I'm doing awesome. So what's going on? Oh, uh, you know, they just did a great skit. Oh, really? Arresting him uh, with a judge for various crimes. Oh, oh, it was a skit. You that. Yeah, it's, and I then, saw some of the police smiling, so that's, uh, you know, and when they're entertained, I mean, shit, that's when we're doing okay. What war crimes is a We believe he's guilty of two major war crimes. Now, the first of all is one of the heights, one of the most serious war crimes you can commit is to engage in an aggressive war. In other words, our country founded and helped found the United Nations. And to have, if it's not a war of self defense, you need Security Council resolution to start a war, to engage in a non defensive war. The Amer America got one Security Council resolution and said they could go back for a second, and the second one was going to be the authorization. They knew they did not have the votes to, to, get, to get that authorization, so we went to war without the second authorization. Even Kofi Annam said, believes that that's a war crime. Now, Carl Rove was chief advisor to President Bush between 2001 and 2007, and he was the, ch the chairperson of the Iraq War Group. So starting in March 2002, he tried to publicize the war, and his group came up with the mushroom cloud defense, making Americans so fearful so that we want to go to war. Now, as a result of this war, Amer first it's cost the American a tremendous amount of money, about two or three trillion dollars, about one third of our national deficit right now. More than 5,000 American soldiers have been killed, and about hundreds of thousands of Iraqis have been killed. The second war crime is torture. Now, just, just recently, Carl Rove said he was proud of engaging in waterboarding. There's an American statute against torture, and in addition, there's international laws against torture. Now, waterboarding, Water, water, waterboarding began with the Spanish Inquisition, and then the Japanese engaged in waterboarding as well. Waterboarding means stimulating drowning. You don't actually feel like you're being drowned by the water being poured on you. Now, our own senator, Senator McCain, said, we successfully prosecuted Japanese after World War II for engaging in waterboarding. In fact, some of those Japanese who were found to be work criminals were executed. In addition, Khmer Rouge in the 70s engaged in waterboarding, and Hillary Clinton was in Cambodia just early this month saying, go ahead and, and, and hold, engage in these war crime tribunals, continue them, because you cannot forget your dark past. If you address your dark past, then you can, you can move from that. Now, President Bush in his new book that came out this week said that he indeed also was proud that we engage in waterboarding. He was proud that we had engaged in waterboarding with Khalid Muhammad. Now, Khalid Muhammad was waterboarded 183 times. Now, you might think, I don't even think one time is enough, but 183 times, that, that is in fact torture. You know, we're learning even more evidence about this. WikiLeaks revealed information from American troops in Iraq. You know, it just came out this month that American troops did nothing in more than hundreds of incidents when Americans allowed individuals to be turned over to the Iraqi police and military to be raped, murdered, and tortured. Under international law, if you allow war crimes and torture to continue as an occupying power, you engage in war crimes yourself. So we believe that if American courts will not try Carl Rove for war crimes, he should go to the International Criminal Court that's prosecuting the war criminals in Cambodia. Do you think perhaps he'll ever answer to these charges? Do you think uh, perhaps he'll ever be charged? Great. You know, the dictatorship in Pinochet in um, Chile thought he was immune when he, when he stayed in Chile. But when he finally, finally came to Europe and a Spanish magistrate had an indictment against him, he was arrested. He finally ultimately was sent back for prosecution in, in Chile. Now, it looked like a pipe dream initially, but I think we as Americans need to hold our own leadership accountable. Now, I grew up in an all-Jewish neighborhood in my elementary school years, and, I, and my best friend's mother was a concentration camp victim. Victim, and we learned back then that the most civilized nation in the world could engage in torture and engage in genocide. So there's no reason why we can't believe that our own country can commit war crimes as well. Now, I'm not saying don't take my word for it. We should hold our own individuals, our own leadership accountable. And in, in, in the immigration debate we recently had in Arizona, we heard over and over again that well, you know, if you violate the law when you're an immigrant, it's the law. I mean, you just got to abide by the law. I say we should hold that, if we're going to hold that same standard for the poorest people in our country and people trying to survive, we've got to hold that same standard to the most powerful people in our country. If you're a Karl Rove, a President Bush, 
uh, uh, Mr. Cheney and any other leader. If you commit a war crime, you should be held in a fair court of law. And if you violate the torture statutes, violate the war crimes set out, uh, statutes set up by the uh, United Nations, you should be held in Well, there you are. Okay, very good. I've got to go cover both Great, sides. Great, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Right. Yeah.